Good morning, all. Welcome to the Business of Open Source track. I'm here to welcome Robert Cheatham, the Tree Strategy Officer at LMA 84. All right, thanks so much, Stephen. Great to see uh, so many friendly faces out there this morning. Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm Robert Cheatham, I'm a Chief Strategy Officer. Many of you probably know me as the former CEO of uh, Azavia, and the talk I'm gonna give is a little bit um, catalyzed by uh, our joining forces with LM84 uh, back in February. So I'm gonna talk about a project uh, I've been working on over the last few months with uh, many of my colleagues at LM84. Um, uh, but just a little bit of an introduction for those of you who aren't uh, familiar with the organization. We're a women-owned uh, small business um, that works with uh, public, uh, private, and uh, nonprofit sector to um, uh, develop geospatial data processing tools and uh, software engineering that helps answer uh, questions about our, our health, our infrastructure, and our changing planet. Um, Element 84 uh, has been deeply rooted in the open source community um, for a, uh, quite a long time, and uh, the fact that we've joined forces with uh, Azavia is, um, is increasing uh, our contributions and helping to leverage that, um, uh, advance, advancing the entire ecosystem. Uh, we do a couple of different things. We build geospatial infrastructure uh, largely around uh, cloud native um, workflows, uh, much of it around remote sensing for a variety of organizations, and we build geospatial applications uh, on top of that. Um, the talk I'm going to uh, uh, do is inspired by an organization called ThoughtWorks. Uh, how many people here have heard of ThoughtWorks? big uh, professional services, software development organization, uh, over 12,000 people do work all over the world. Um, they publish, and they've published since 2010, something called the ThoughtWorks uh, Technology Radar. Uh, they just released version 29 of this. Um, and this radar is intended to be a snapshot of uh, tools, uh, techniques, platforms, languages, um, and frameworks based on their pragmatic experience uh, actually working with those tools. Uh, their um, radar is organized into um, quadrants. They're using that radar metaphor as a way to think about things that are coming closer and uh, sort of having a scan of what's on the horizon and then organizing those into things that we should uh, trial, assess, uh, or adopt, and then they have a fourth uh, level called hold. Uh, it's essentially like, we've tried this and it's not very good and you shouldn't use it, uh, which is sort of the outermost one. And then they organize into four different quadrants uh, based on these different uh, components, techniques, tools, and so on. Um, uh, they've been doing this a while. Uh, I apologize, the, uh, I'm not sure if someone in the back in the technical team, the, like the slide that I can see is about six inches and I'm, I can't see even what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna uh, turn to the side, but I also can't read that. Um, uh, they've been doing this, they, they, get, they get together about 20 of their technology leads and they work on this all year long. They have bi-weekly meetings, they have a retreat uh, every six months for a couple of weeks. Uh, they are drawing on knowledge of a truly enormous uh, organization. Um, and uh, this has been inspiring people for some time. They actually encourage people to uh, create their own radars. They've, uh, in the spirit of open source, released a GitHub repository. You can go out and create your own uh, and they encourage people to do so. Um, and uh, Element 84 has done this before. In 2014, not long after uh, our founding, uh, one of my colleagues, Jason Gilman, wrote a technology radar and it was published as a blog. This blog did incredibly well. It uh, got a lot of attention. It was not a, a particularly focused on geospatial or open source. It was just uh, some of the tools that LM84 was using um, in its early youth. Uh, this past year, in uh, light of the um, uh, acquisition of Azavia, 
uh, Dan uh, Plone, our CEO, uh, came to me and said, it'd be really great to do this, and, but do it more regularly and really focus on uh, our areas of expertise, geospatial and uh, open source. So uh, we wanted to build a uh, geospatial technology radar uh, that would contribute to a broader conversation. Um, part of uh, a lot of what makes open source work is a lot of people talking to each other and collaborating over a period of time. In addition, if you've ever heard uh, Chris Holmes um, or uh, Paul Ramsey uh, talk, you know that uh, opinions uh, cogently expressed can have an enormous impact on the direction of a community and an ecosystem. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, in doing this, um, we wanted to uh, uh, express some of the different practice areas that we have expertise with uh, at Element 84. Um, so you can organize a lot of our practice areas into four simple things. We do a lot of work around uh, machine learning. Someone keeps changing the thing. <laughs> OK. Um, uh, we do a lot of software engineering and uh, data analytics. We do a, uh, have a lot of experience working with uh, Amazon Web Services and Azure um, uh, around cloud architecture and scaling. And we have a significant user experience design practice. And we wanted to make sure we reflected each of these practice areas and what we built. So we made some pretty significant changes to what ThoughtWorks does. We combine platform and tools. Uh, our feeling was in the contemporary uh, software world, the difference between platform and tools is not that significant, uh, or the boundary is not very clear. Uh, we left techniques as it was, and we, uh, we dropped languages, uh, and we replaced the uh, two empty spots with data and standards. Data is such a critical part of a lot of what we are doing in the geospatial world, uh, and standards are a key part of how Element 84 has been making contributions and expressing leadership over the last several years. We host uh, stack code sprints. We contribute to the satellite um, tasking specification that's got off the ground. You may, some of you may have heard about it this week. Um, and so those are some pretty significant changes to the quadrants we wanted to try to uh, address here. Um, the second was when we put together our initial list of what we wanted to uh, write about, we didn't have a whole lot in that hold category. In addition, uh, we're an organization that works with a lot of different tools and a lot of different customers and partners, and we didn't really want to be in a position where we're saying, don't use this, because <laughs> there's probably some of our friends might be people who really want to use that and think it's a really good thing. In addition, we felt like it didn't really reflect this radar metaphor to have a hold category. And uh, so we have replaced that with what we're calling watch. And in the geospatial world, this is particularly important, uh, especially around data, where we know, for example, that Planet Labs is planning on launching a Pelican constellation. That's going to be a really big set of, you know, big set of changes in terms of what's possible with planet uh, data. There are a lot of new hyperspectral satellites about to be launched over the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, NISAR is supposed to be launched in January uh, and is going to mean some capability changes to what's possible with SAR data. We wanted to be able to write about that because we're fairly confident those things are going to happen and we want to be able to talk about um, uh, the future even though no one can yet use that data. So uh, we've got this watch idea. So we used a lot of the same criteria that uh, ThoughtWorks did. Um, uh, we asked ourselves, is, is this particular, uh, uh, we we'll call them blips, or ThoughtWorks calls them blips. Is this particular blip directly related to, to or having a significant impact on geospatial technology? So we didn't only write about geospatial items, we did write about some other things um, uh, like Dask, but things that have a big impact on the geospatial ecosystem. Second, uh, do we have enough experience with the technology to have a thoughtfully held opinion about it? This is a really important criteria. We don't want to be talking about things that we uh, don't know enough about to have an informed opinion on. So if when looking through this, you see, well, why didn't you talk about this? Part of it maybe we don't feel like we know enough about it uh, to say something useful. 
Has it changed or developed? Uh, have there been changes or developments with technology over the past year? Uh, this also is important. We didn't, for example, uh, write about uh, Google or JTS. These things are so much part of the woodwork, they're not even questioned, and we didn't have enough to say about what's new with them um, that we felt like it was worth highlighting. So things need to have changed or developed in some new way. Now, we are bringing, we have incorporated some pretty old uh, technologies. HDF5, for example, which has been around for 30 years, um, is included, but it's being used in new ways, and so we're, uh, we're highlighting it for that reason. Does this support our focus on open source, open data, uh, open standards, and public good? Uh, we're part of an um, open knowledge ecosystem. We want to uh, write about that particular set of things, so we have a pretty heavy bias toward that. We didn't limit ourselves only to open source, but it's um, a pretty significant, uh, uh, we leaned heavily on that, um, that side of the scale. Uh, we anticipated a few potential issues and we did run into them. Uh, we aim to have an opinionated guide and as I uh, suggested earlier, what if we have opinions that throw shade on a customer or partner? We just tried to avoid that. We tried to be positive, tried to say good things about um, uh, uh, the things that we're going to write about. The uh, second, uh, as I suggested earlier, we're not a 12,000 person company. Our exposure is going to be narrower than an organization like ThoughtWorks. Um, and we have a half a dozen leads instead of 20 plus. Um, and we don't have the resources for biweekly meetings and annual uh, two week long retreats. Um, so uh, this is going to be limited by some of those uh, characteristics. Our process uh, would be, looks a lot like what you might expect. Uh, we generated a straw man version. We didn't just throw a bunch of things into a, a pot uh, from uh, a bunch of different people and say, okay, let's write about this. Uh, I actually wrote a first version of it, essentially for everyone to critique with the idea that individuals uh, propose and groups dispose. It's a lot easier to edit something and add to it uh, than it is to start from a blank sheet of paper. We added and removed candidate terms. That straw man changed a lot. We had some uh, pretty extensive discussions. There wasn't always uh, agreement, but we had pretty good consensus on what we we're going to write about. We then allocated this to a bunch of different writers who had the most experience with something. Uh, and then we uh, reviewed that. Uh, these are not sequential. We, our design team played a really significant role in this, um, but their work actually started quite a bit earlier than this um, list would suggest. And then uh, we wanted to publish it as a blog article, uh, an interactive web page, and a PDF, and then share it with all of you here. So we're essentially launching it this week. So all those things are done, and uh, uh, this talk is about that initial sharing out. So uh, this is the blog. Uh, there is an interactive that looks pretty different from uh, ThoughtWorks. Uh, we did not use their um, the software that they had released in the GitHub repository. We kind of uh, created our own work, and there are a few uh, specific reasons for that. A lot of them came out of insights from our uh, UX design team. Uh, but there's an interactive, and you can mouse over on it and click on things to see uh, all of that. Uh, here's another display of that. Uh, and then there's a, a, a document that you can uh, download and, and read at your leisure. So we, ba we made a bunch of other changes. In addition to not having um, uh, the same categories as ThoughtWorks, we were somewhat critical of uh, the display. While the metaphor of a radar, and therefore showing that as a nested set of circles with uh, blips that sort of increase in intensity as you move in, um, is interesting and useful and is a helpful metaphor, it's actually not an awesome way to interact with data. So if you start jamming a bunch of points into a progressively uh, nested set of circles, that gets harder and harder to interact with. Uh, and so while we did display it that way to honor that radar metaphor, we provided several other displays that were essentially orthogonal grids. Um, we also introduced uh, shading of the of the um, of the blips to show like how far how confident we are in, in that particular thing or how close we are to recommending adoption. Uh, 
So uh, we, we experimented some, with some different uh, layouts. This is the ThoughtWorks radar. They've got numbers on everything. We felt like this was pretty distracting. And if you have better layouts that make it easier to browse and understand things at a glance, you don't really need the numbers. This is what uh, Tufti might call chart junk. So we uh, took that stuff out. And this is our first one. So one of the things that ThoughtWorks does is they have a sort of direction of travel indication. As a blip new, has it moved? What direction has it moved in, uh, up or down? Um, or is there no change? We didn't worry about that because we haven't had any changes. So we'll probably uh, add this in a future version. So. Uh, it has been a big rush. We were still making edits this morning, literally minutes before uh, this was happening. Uh, we found some errors in PDF and I think we've updated it. But um, over the last week or so, I've had a little bit of time to think about um, some reflections on, on uh, what this means and how we might have done better. But some of these reflections relate to how people do collaborative work. This was essentially a lot of different people contributing to uh, a shared uh, project and uh, not that different from building open source software. And so like uh, an open source project, uh, we ran into some trouble that I think we, we probably, sh we could have, we did anticipate, I guess, but I don't think we did a great job of um, uh, working through it. So I just wanna be a little bit critical about it. So one example is length. Uh, the left uh, one is PM tiles and the right one is uh, Source Cooperative, uh, the project that uh, uh, Jed is talking about and that Chris Holmes mentioned a couple of times in his uh, keynote yesterday. Um, different people wrote these. They have a different perspective. Uh, uh, Spoiler alert, the one on the right I wrote, <laughs> I am not known for my brevity. <laughs> and I wanted to talk about, well, where did Source Cooperative come from? And the ML Hub project that preceded it, and why did that, why was that created? And the history around that, and what does it all mean? And so like, I barely have fit my text into a page. <laughs> and the person I, I worked on pre-M tiles was uh, much briefer about it. Anyway, uh, this difference in like voice and length and how far you go into something and how much content text do you give it takes a lot of time to edit through and I don't think we did a great job of this in this an area where we should uh, probably try to improve the next time around but I think that's really similar to what goes on in let's say writing documentation for an open source project you're gonna have a lot of different contributors to it uh, they're gonna have different voices they're gonna have different style of writing uh, they're gonna have a different approach in terms of how much context they give and so on um, we missed some stuff. <laughs> like uh, after we finalized the list, and we were still finalizing the list, uh, but we agreed we weren't gonna add anything else. We did remove a few things uh, late in the game. Uh, but I wrote down a list of all the things that I was pretty sure we missed and we could have written about. Um, and even in a small organization like ours, we're less than 100 people, like our engineers don't know what all the other engineers are working on and having an overview of everything that's happening in the organization is actually pretty tough. Uh, a colleague did a talk on OGC API for processes. I had no idea someone was working with this. That would have been a great one to have written about uh, and we didn't include it. Uh, Tippecanoe and X-Array and Pangeo, also probably things we uh, missed. Uh, should have thought about queryable earth. Uh, Chris had done that um, talk uh, several years ago. And then at this event, I saw things that we probably should be th looking at for the next one. Apache Sedona, Apache Iceberg, Havasu, and uh, Chris Holmes also mentioned this idea of a cloud native spatial data infrastructure. So stay tuned in the next one. Uh, there were some other challenges um, and they hit our machine learning team probably most significantly. Some stuff's just really complicated to talk about and think about. And so ThoughtWorks actually has a term for this. Um, they call it TCTB, too complex to blip. Uh, and a lot of our machine learning work is like this. The techniques are changing fast. How we think about the techniques is changing fast. What is a foundation model? Uh, what is transfer learning and how is it being used in the geospatial world? Uh, all of these things we, we tried to, so, so the, the, the machine learning blips were very much a moving target all the way up to the, um, all the way up to the end. And the team had to grapple with trying to create something that's useful, interesting, has some context, 
uh, and also realizing that they'll probably have regrets in about a week <laughs> in terms of what um, what's changing in that world. I don't know how to fix that. That's um, Sometimes the world's just complicated and it's hard to write in simple terms. Next time, uh, I think perhaps we should start earlier. We started in August uh, and we, like I said, we were still racing this past week. We could have used a few more weeks on editing. On the other hand, I am one of those people who will be working on something right up to the deadline anyway. And so if I had given myself two months, I probably would have still taken two months. And if I give myself four months, I still would be working up to the uh, deadline. So, but still, I think we probably could have started earlier and having something to start from now as our starting point next year uh, will probably be helpful. I think we could have done a more proactive, like deliberate job of getting input from beyond the leads. Like this was a explicitly assigned to the group of uh, technology leads at the organization. Uh, we probably could have like proactively reached out deeper into the organization and done a better job uh, surfacing uh, blips. I think we could have had more eyes on the editing, like having someone to edit for voice and length and, and all of the other things uh, that was not one of the writers probably would have been a pretty helpful thing. Uh, and we will be paying more attention to movement, the direction of travel uh, on a future one. Uh, and another thing that ThoughtWorks does that I think is pretty helpful is um, in, in they not only publish this, they now sort of step back a little bit and try to thematize some of the observations. So if you've got 70 or 80 of these uh, blips, uh, how do you start to draw some broad uh, thematic conclusions across them? We did not do that here, and I think there's an opportunity to do so in the future. Uh, so that is the radar, go to element84.com, uh, geospatial tech radar 23. Uh, and there's a blog, and that the blog also has links to things. Um, this was a team effort. A lot of people contributed. Uh, it's a list of the content contributors there. I'm grateful for uh, all of them, uh, as well as the designers and uh, engineers that worked on the interactive version. Get some more information about uh, Element 84. Uh, we have one more talk happening this week. Uh, my colleague, uh, Brad Andrick, is going to be um, uh, talking about digital cartography with uh, visualizing large data sets uh, at 3 o'clock this afternoon. And there's the links again. I want to close by saying I'm grateful for all of you. Uh, many of what goes into here uh, is inspired by the conversations that we have uh, with all of you in this uh, in the open source uh, ecosystem and events like this help to uh, catalyze these kinds of conversations and uh, look forward to many more and your contributions in the future. Thank you. Thank you.